Hey guys, greeting. Welcome to a new show of mine,、uh, Movie Review with Ron. This show is a new and casual show, talk show where I'm just gonna review the movie I've watched and the movie I'm watching currently. This show is not a、um, movie essays or、um, some sort of really serious movie critics. It is the、uh, raw thoughts of my view on the movie, and it can be a、uh, very It could be a very honest review.、Uh, some people may not agree on my opinion, but、uh, as I said, it's just a very casual、uh, talk show. So anyway, the first movie、um, of the first show, the movie I watched recently, the la- latest movie I've watched, it is called Capote, directed by Bennett Miller. Quite a subtle director, to be honest. He has directed not much movie, but、um, the most famous one, of course, Capote, and、uh, Moneyball with. Brad Pitt and、um, the latest documentary, The Sky Ladder, which described a Chinese artist who wanted to achieve his dream through art. So the movie Capote was actually based、uh, of a true event and a true human being named Truman Capote. He was a quite a well-known author in the mid 20th century in America.、Uh, his famous work include Breakfast at Tiffany, which later became a movie、uh, starring the famous、uh, actress Audrey Hepburn. Her performance in that movie wasn't particularly good, but because of the book portrayal of the character very vividly, so making her so that that helps her to become a very iconic image and a personality. So anyway, back to the movie. The movie Capote was actually based on a real book by the author Capote.、Uh, the book name is In Cold Blood. It was his last book and also one of the quote best book he ever written. In the movie, Capote himself was portrayed by a famous, renowned actor named Philip Hoffman. He was a well-renowned and talented who starred in one of my favorite movies, The Big Lebowski. In the movie, Capote Hoffman won an Oscar award. His portrayal of Truman Capote was very real and very delicate. He explored all this hand gesture, his movement of the mouth. He looked at documentary of Capote and even his eyes, the twitching of his eye. He he really get into that as well. After watching the movie, I looked at some documentary of Truman Cop- Capote, and you can really see where Hoff at that point you can really see where Hoffman he really investigate and sort of almost consume Truman Capote and. Have him inside himself on the screen. There are very rare occasions where an actor or actress can really captivate me and absorb, sort of absorb my soul on the screen. Hoffman in this film was really almost like a piece of walking art. So first of all, I just want to talk about some really basic、um, visual that I see on a film that really intrigued me. One of the cinematography techniques that I was really pleased with was the color palette and the contrast that the movie used. The very bluish color, very cold sense of tone, the very low contrast really set up the atmosphere and also the also really goes really well with Hoffman's portrayal of the character of his very cold-blooded characteristic and very. Manipulative personality in general. Another actress that I want to mention is Catherine Keener. Somehow in my life, all the movie that I watched, and she is always portrayed as a very mean woman, being John Malkovich and Get Out. In this movie, she was very kind-hearted and a very nice person. But I reckon, as a supporting actress, her role wasn't fulfilled in this movie. In many scenario. Her performance was either outshined by Hoffman or just very dull in general. She was a very forgettable character in the movie. One of the scene in Act One I was very impressed with was with how Hoffman hold the phone when he was talking to other people. Well, Truman Cop Capote is a very manipulative person. It's very, it's a perfectionist. It's a very self-attached person. It's an artist of his of his kind at the time and. He is a very delicate person as well, and when I see Hoffman holding the phone, just the gesture of the hand really, really show the character of his character. 
and I was very impressed by just the detail he paid attention to when it comes to acting. In a movie, but also in real world, Truman Capote was always、uh, known as this very famous author, but also a very famous celebrity as well. He always really wanted to portray himself in front of everyone. This very fun person, this very iconic person, this very avant-garde author. And in the movie, Hoffman really portrayed that、uh, side of him. And I love how how the director deliberately inserts a few scenes where Hoffman himself talked in front of a lot of people in public, and not only talking to them, but also you can see where he controlled the environments, where he he make funny jokes, smart jokes that seeking a lot of attention. He really wants to be the center of the public event, and that really shows who Truman Capote is. In the middle of the movie. This is when the、um, the tone changes. This is when the turning point of Hoffman. Hoffman met this convict. He was in the middle of investigating for his novel in cold blood, and he needed information to finish the story. So he investigated the convict called Perry. This is the point of the movie where we can see the essence of the performance by Hoffman, the turning point of the character, but also the true identity of the. Character at this point of the story and the movie, I really think this is when the complexity of the character and the story start emerging. And I think Hoffman really was really responsible of taking this role as an actor of the protagonist, where he really unfold the complexity and the two sides of Capote in front of the audience. The sides of Capote, where he is a true artist, and artists really want to. Produce the best work ever,、um, but on the other hand, he really is this character of very manipulative, a very cold-blooded self, a very、um, attention-seeking, a very demoralized personality side of him. And Hoffman really captures that. In the middle of the movie, we can see Capote was very frustrated over that he couldn't finish the fourth part of his novel because he doesn't know the truth of what happened that night. When Perry and Dick killed the whole family. Now this is a very interesting turning point for the character because this is when he demoralized and dehumanized himself. In the later parts of the movie, we can see Philip Hoffman delivers a very good performance where he shows Capote betrayed Perry's、uh, friendship and he really uses Perry to finish the last part of the story. He manipulates him and. He also says that one thing very interesting in the story, where they're both very、really、similar person, they're cold-blooded in the same way, but they ended up in a different path. And I found it very interesting where Capote really play on play on this criminal's mind. And but on the other hand, we're also exploring this theme of who is actually the murderer. And Perry literally killed people physically, but for Capote, he murdered Perry's innocence. He murdered. The little innocence that left in Perry in him, so we can question that ourselves. And that movie and Hoffman really delivered that performance so well that makes me want to question that. In the end of the movie, Perry and Dick died in an execution, and they died thinking that Capote was their true friend. They also think that Capote was actually constructing this book to bring redemption on the scenes. To tell the public that that night when they killed the whole family wasn't driven by evil intention, but was by impulses, innocent impulses that every human being would have. But in reality, Capote was almost finishing a book called In Cold Blood, and that book portrayed Perry and Dick, a very evil murderer who murdered the whole family with cold blood. Capote at the end, he wants to finish a perfect book, a perfect piece of work, and that's nothing wrong with it. Every artist and every author. Every creator wants to finish a perfect piece of his work, but the thing is that the method of doing it is arguable. Capote didn't write any more books after writing *In the Cold Blood*, and he became a drug addict and an alcoholic. Now we can only ask why he became this sort of person and doesn't write any more books. It's the only thing that he likes. Is he repenting on the fact that he betrayed Perry and Dick, or he he couldn't get over the fact that he betrayed? His own moral, he betrays his own artistic values. The movie ended in a very beautiful and rational way. The director didn't make us think that Capote was the true bad guy, 
or Perry and Dick was the one that we should pity on. But rather, the movie ended in a very open-ending style that makes the audience to think and really sink in to think that whether Capote was happy about this novel or whether he was regretting over the facts that he betrayed a friendship between him and the convicts. This movie is really definitely a worth to watch movie, but it's also a worth to watch Philip Hoffman performance on how he portray a character, his attention to detail, and his ability to dissect a character and unfold it clearly in front of us, no matter how complex it is.